I assume you took her down gently? Actually, she and I were the top-ranked hand-to-hand specialists on the ship. I had reach, but she had flexibility. Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. This is Hill here on board the Normandy with Sendarius Shepard and his crew. Okay, we have just concluded our business on the Citadel and we are here to do some talking. So, we have completed numerous loyalty quests and we need to catch up with our crew. It's just one of those staples of a Bioware game. Something that I miss. But anyhow, Let's go ahead and talk to Morden. We've completed his quest on Tachunka. Let's see what he has to say. Still hard to believe Malin betrayed me. Betrayed my work. Disgusted by his actions. Proud of his nerve, though. Always thought he lacked backbone. Shame I had to kill him. Might have made a good member of the team. Willing to get his hands dirty. Hmm. You're awfully relaxed. You're really at peace with what happened? Yes, of course. Can't change what happened. Life continues. Back to mission, back to work. Become like Malin otherwise. Salarian emotional processing faster than other species. Has to be. Short-lived culture can't spend time reminiscing. Well, Malin wasn't like that. Malin didn't seem like he processed his emotional response. He was obsessed with the genophage. True. Didn't mean to imply that Salarians were healthier emotionally. Can still make wrong choices. Bad decisions from grief, anger, guilt. Malin couldn't accept feelings. Made decision. Executed. Probably before I left for Omega. Wish I'd seen it. Salarians still feel, just resolve it quickly. Explains lack of marriage, can't sustain courtship emotions. Or perhaps based on reproduction. Unsure. Hmm. So you don't feel anything? So you really don't feel bad at all about what happened on Tachanka? Yes, correct. Now at least. Greatly distressed at the time. Stages of grief, loss, anger, rationalization. Dealt with it. Most issues settled on Tachanka, some on shuttle back to Normandy. Yes, we all missed the part where he was bawling like a little baby on board the shuttle. All right, let's ask about Malin's research. What about Malin's data on the genophage? His attempts at a cure? What about it? Have it over there somewhere. Not dealing with it now. Need to focus on collectors. Not important now, regardless. Appreciate you helping me back on Tujanka. Should get back to work. Wasted enough time already. Lots to do. Talk later? Okay. Later for you. So, we've talked as much as we can, for the moment, with Morden, and now we will go, let's see, who's next on our list? Uh, we have Samara and Thane. So, we will just start at the top this time and work our way down to the bottom. You know, I usually start at the bottom. And then we end up at the top, but this time we're going to do it differently. All right, starboard observation deck. Yes, Samara. Okay, see, I'm, I'm starting to learn the ship, people. I'm starting to learn the ship. Okay, let's talk to Samara. Morinth haunted my dreams and waking hours equally. For the first time in 400 years, I am free. I am a ruined vessel of sorrow and regret, but I am free. It is not a feeling I can describe. Well, well, you know, we are so glad we could help her with her 400-year mission that she wasn't able to complete on her own. We're just very happy. Let's ask about her feelings about Morinth. You said that Morinth was a monster, but she was still your daughter. She was the strongest and smartest. She would not accept the injustice thrust upon her. She fought to the end. I am so proud of her, Shepard. Isn't that hypocritical? You killed her for being what she was. And I would again. But I also know what it means to leave everything behind and fight. Do you realize that she went on the run at the age of 40? I do not know human years well, but it is very young for Asari. Oh, uh, yeah. Forty is a full-grown adult lady. That would be something if somebody like 
ran away from home at age 40. Can you imagine? <laughs> anyway. Um, let's ask about her feelings. You did your duty. What about your feelings? One of my daughters is dead. My hopes, my dreams were all bound up in my children. Still, my feelings have always come after my duty. The same is true of you. Let's talk about the price of freedom. Was it worth it? It was never a question of worth, but of need. I had to take the action I did, as did she. This was never a story that would have a happy outcome. Okay. So what now? What will you do now that Morath is gone? Assuming I survive your mission, I am a Justicar. Injustice still exists, and perhaps even other Ardat Yakshi. Let's talk about the genetic destiny of the Asari. Morinth claimed that her condition was the future of the Asari race. Morinth would say anything that served her cause. Ardat Yakshi are sterile, Shepard. That wouldn't be a particularly viable future for my people. Hmm. Okay, so that gives us some insight into Morin's character. Not very truthful, it seems. All right, let's ask about the rarity. I thought Ardat Yachi were extremely rare. Asari have spread to many worlds. There are remote regions with no government oversight. If I travel to those worlds and they do exist, I will find them. Let's ask about prevention. There's no way to correct the condition Morinth had? We are an advanced species, but we don't have magic. When the trait manifests at maturity, it is too late for mitigation. It only occurs in purebloods like myself. Perhaps that is the root of the stigma regarding Asari-exclusive pairings. I don't know. Hmm. So, no retirement. You don't want to settle down? I did. I returned to my homeworld and tried to start a family. I will fight and struggle all my life. That is my fate. When I die, it will not be in bed. I am at peace with that. All right. Enjoy your meditation. I should go. Of course, Commander. Thank you again. Yeah, well, I'm just glad she's on our side. Okay, so we're going down here to life support. And talk to Mr. Krios. Do you need something? Uh, I want to talk about you. Have a few minutes to talk? Certainly. I'm not sure where this is coming from, but Shepard says you don't seem confident. He seems like the same old Thane that I've always known and seen since we've recruited him. You know, when I went looking for an assassin, I expected to get a badass. You seem more like a monk. In my experience, those who are truly dangerous don't act like they are. The Hanar trained my body for this role since I was six years old. Six. You've been killing since you were six? Of course not. I didn't make my first kill until I was twelve. They were training me. I was not to be used and thrown away. I was an investment. Hmm. Investment? That's cold. You were a child, not an investment. I've given you the wrong idea. They valued me, yes, as a resource, but also as a person. They regretted their need for me. Let's ask about the Hanar. The Hanar? Excessively polite, worship the Protheans? They don't seem the type who train assassins. Every species trains assassins. The Hanar are only unusual in that they need other species to do the killing for them. They have a strong grip and natural toxins, but... Have you ever seen one move quickly outside of water? Or fire a gun? <laughs> yes. So you may recall the Hanar. Um, there were some here in Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 1, there are those telepathic jellyfish-like creatures that seem very pacifistic. So this is quite unusual to hear that they train other races to become assassins. Okay, what did your parents do? Why did your parents agree to this? The agreement was made under the Compact. It was an honor for our family. The Compact? 
We live on the Hanar homeworld because they rescued us, some of us, from extinction. We owe them our lives. That is the compact. Let's ask about extinction. Why was your race going extinct? Overpopulation. That must sound trite to you. Humans developed mass effect drive before the problem became acute. Our homeworld, Rakana, had few resources. We hadn't even developed fusion power when the soil began to fail from overuse and pollution. The Hanar found us a century ago. They sent hundreds of ships, evacuated thousands of us. Billions more had to be left behind. And what is your world like now? What's the state of Rakana now? Do you read your philosophers? A man named Thomas Hobbes. When all the world is overcharged with inhabitants, then the last remedy of all is war, which provideth for every man by victory or death. As Rakana died around them, my people slaughtered each other for mouthfuls of water, crumbs of food. That is sad. Let's ask about the Compact. What exactly are the terms of the Compact? There are many things the Hanar can't do, even with mechanical aid. They ask Drell to assist them. The Hanar sound like wimps. The way you describe it, the Hanar sound like weaklings. Out here they are. But if you could see them in the encompassing, the oceans of Kaje, you would see them differently. A stream of silver in the dark, looping, diving. So fast the eye can't follow. Left me like the squeals of a child fighting against the water. They fly over the black of the sea bed like birds, plumed with the light of heaven. All right, so maybe when he goes into that reverie state, it's not that unusual if you just listen to his words. I mean, we as the audience are getting treated to, you know, these lights and sounds and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, maybe it's not as weird as it seems to Shepard, who just hears him saying these things that he's remembering. Okay, it sounds like slavery to me. This can't be legal. They made your whole race into slaves. Don't insult me, Shepard. Anyone can refuse to serve. Few do. We owe our existence to the Hanar. We are proud to repay the debt. All right then, Shepard. I think he told you. So who do you work for now? But you don't kill for the Hanar anymore. You're freelance. What changed? I was asleep for a long time, yes. I paid no attention to what my body was asked to do, but then... Laser dot trembles on the skull. One finger twitch. He dies. Then, the smell of spice on the spring wind. Sunset colored eyes defiant in the scope. The laser dances away. My apologies. Drell slip into memory so easily. And what memory was that? Was that one of your assassinations? Uh, yes. Perhaps we can discuss it later. I've wasted too much of your time. Okay, well, I guess we'll have to come back and talk to him later. And we got two Renegade. Hoping that there is a later because we are, you know, we're getting close to the end game here. And that's why I'm talking to these people now because we have one more loyalty mission to go and I'm not sure if that's going to trigger the elusive man and, you know, then we can't you know, make any choices of our own. Um, let's go talk to Miranda. I'm kind of worried about this, though, because when she goes into her back room, that pretty much means you're a lock for a love interest. But this shepherd, I'm trying to keep him loyal to Liara. And, you know, I say that, and here I am here to talk to her. So let's see what she's got to say. Commander. What can I do for you? Can we talk? You have a minute, Miranda? Of course. I'd been meaning to speak with you, in fact. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go to the back room again, people. I wanted to apologize. I didn't fully believe you'd be up to the task, and it seems I was wrong. Frankly, Based on what I've seen, I wish Cerberus had recruited you earlier. Hmm. No, I'm not saying so do I. I'm still saying Cerberus is wrong. I trust you, but I don't trust Cerberus. Your experiments cross the line. All the time, yes. 
but I recall a spectre who crossed a few lines while hunting down Saren and the Geth, and we'd be lucky to have you. Too many join us out of simple xenophobia. We need more people here for the right reasons. I saw your monsters. And poor Admiral Kahoku! We're not gonna forget about him! I saw your faces years ago. You were using Rachni, Thorian creepers, even husks to make your own army. The husks were already dead. The Thorian creatures were mindless and the Rachni were abandoned once we understood their intelligence. We weren't breeding an army, we were breeding expendable shock troops for high-risk scenarios. How many soldiers died in Saren's attack on Eden Prime? How many would have lived if we'd had just a dozen Rachni soldiers on our side? Okay, well, now she does make an interesting argument, I cannot deny. Because we lost our poor, um, what was he, Jenkins? I mean, you know, he may not have died when we went down to Eden Prime. But let's ask about Jack. What was Cerberus trying to prove by experimenting on children like Jack? A mistake, no question. Not mine. And one that was corrected once we discovered the extent of the experiments being performed. Mm hmm So, why do you like Cerberus? With your intelligence, you could have landed any job you wanted. Why choose this? Because I still envy the time Morden spent with the Special Tasks Group, working with people as smart as he was. Cerberus never tells me that something is impossible. They give me my resources and say do it. And they've given you even more. A new life, a new ship, the elusive man's personal attention. Uh-oh. Here's the... Here is the pivotal, pivotal moment here. I can't. I, even though Liara has changed, I mean, you know, he still has feelings for her. But he is a renegade, and he is a man. I'm going with you sound unhappy. I'm sorry, people. What? You disapprove? No. I'm just impressed. You're... Well, look at you. A kid from the slums of Earth. No family. Little formal education. And you've done more than I could. Deeper into the room. Despite everything my father did to make me perfect, you're you're the best humanity has to offer. Hmm. This again? Does it always have to come back to your father's genetic tailoring? This is what I am, Shepard. I can't hide it. The intelligence, the looks, even the biotics. He paid for all of that. Every one of your accomplishments is due to your skill. The only things I can take credit for are my mistakes. Yeah, I'm not gonna go with your jet. Well, even though it seems like maybe she is, but... Wow. I'm sorry you feel that way. I really do. That's a tough feeling to live with. Maybe after we save the galaxy, you'll change your mind. We can hope. Thanks for coming by, Shepard. I appreciate it. Ooh, four renegade. Ugh, two paragon. All right, so I think we have eliminated the possibility of a romance with Miranda. So when we do encounter Liara later on, we won't get those snide remarks. And I'm talking about the Shadow Is Broker DLC. On horizon? Yes. By All right, uh, Garrus is next. Account. Shepard, need me for something? Just want to talk. Have you got a minute? Sure, just killing time anyway. I wanted to thank you again for your help with Sedonis. Whatever happens with the Collectors or the Reapers or whoever else comes after us, I know you'll get the job done. Hmm, <laughs> whoever else. You actually think we'll find something worse than Collectors or Reapers? I like to expect the worst. There's a small chance I'll be pleasantly surprised. Well, we're gonna win, Garrus. One way or another, we'll get the job done. I tell you I'm skeptical, but Saren doubted you and it didn't go well for him. It's strange going into a suicide mission on a human ship. Your people don't prepare for high-risk operations the way Turians do. Oh, well, what about Ilos? I thought you'd be used to high-risk operations on human ships. I mean, think about tracking Saren to Ilos. 
Sure, but that was quick. We raced out, landed, blew up some geth, and saved the galaxy. This time we've got Miranda and Cerberus and that AI all telling us what we're up against. I think I preferred blind optimism. <laughs> well, let's ask about Turian preparations. How do Turian crews get ready for high-risk missions? With violence, usually. Turian ships have more operational discipline than your alliance, but fewer personal restrictions. Our commanders run us tight, and they know we need to blow off steam. Turian ships have training rooms for exercise, combat sims, even full contact sparring. Whatever lets people work off stress. Full contact sparring? You mean Turian ships have crewmen fighting each other before a mission? It's supervised, of course. Nobody's going to risk an injury that interferes with the mission, and it's a good way to settle grudges amicably. I remember right before one mission, we were about to hit a Batarian pirate squad. Very risky. This recon scout and I had been at each other's throats. Nerves, mostly. She suggested we settle it in the ring. And how did it go? I assume you took her down gently? Actually, she and I were the top-ranked hand-to-hand -hand specialists on the ship. I had reach, but she had flexibility. It was brutal. After nine rounds, the judge called it a draw. There were a lot of unhappy betters in the training room. We uh, ended up holding a tiebreaker in her quarters. I had reach, but uh, she had flexibility. More than one way to work off stress, I guess. I guess so, Garrus. Look at Shepard. <laughs> I guess he gets the sexual innuendo. All right, uh, let's, uh, I think we've talked about Garrus and C-Sec uh, before. Let's talk about our es his estimation of our chances. Honestly, Garrus, what do you think our chances are? Honestly? The Collectors killed you once, and all they did is piss you off. I can't imagine they'll stop you this time. But an unmapped area, advanced technology, and the Collectors... We're going to lose people. No way around that. Not a happy analysis, I know. Don't worry. I won't spread it around. And I'm with you regardless. All right. Thank you, Garrus. Thanks for the talk, Garrus. I'll see you later. Sure thing. Okay. We need to go down another level. You know, I almost forget that Garrus is back there sometimes. I mean, they really have him, like, out of the way. All right, we're headed to Deck 4 Engineering. And I believe there is only one person down here. I jumped in the elevator so quickly. But uh, we are here. No, actually, there's Grunt and Tally. So we're here to talk to Grunt. Erd not Grunt. I like it. Yes, Erd I have a clan. That makes me... It makes me want to fight, not just able to. At Uvink, I wanted to disembowel him, to tear out his spine like a trophy. All right, we'll save it for the Collectors. Can you focus that on our real enemy? Or do I have to lock you up for the ship's safety? I get it now. It's part of what I am. It was just delayed because of being tank bred. Now that I know it's not an outside thing, and I have a place as a Krogan, I like it. Our enemies are in trouble, Shepard. And we better not run out of targets. All right, well, there's no shortage there. There's no danger of that. They're practically lining up. Everyone gets a turn. Ha! <laughs> Wouldn't want it any other way. Oh, no, we got Paragon for that. Okay. Well, I guess I should have spoken to him in a much harsher tone. Kenny, okay, the here we are. Tally! No much. Kila, I'm sorry I dragged you into Quarian politics. All that infighting, seeing what my father did. You were the only one there for me, Shepard. The only cover I had against that storm. Thank you. Let's ask about the trial being normal. Are Quarian politics always like that? No. Sometimes it can actually get unpleasant. We're a very social people, Shepard. We have to be, to make up for being stuck in these suits. And part of that means getting involved in each other's business. Let's ask, will their politics shift? I imagine they're trying to fill your father's spot on the Admiralty Board. What will that do to the balance of power? I have no idea. 
Being exiled might have made it easier. A few people are suggesting me as a candidate. Replacing an admiral takes time, though. You may not have noticed, but Quarians like to debate. No, we didn't notice a thing. All right, um... I guess that's it. We can say you deserve better, but oh my gosh, I'm gonna get more Paragon, but I like Tally. The whole trial was insulting. You should have had time to mourn your father. I don't think life is about what you deserve, but my father would be honored that I chose to mourn him by blowing up a lot of gap. I should get back to work, but thanks for checking on me. You're welcome, Tally. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got the two Paragon. Okay, let's... Is this, um... Yeah, here's the elevator. Let me just make sure we've talked to everyone. Jack's mission we still have to do. We talked to Grunt. Zaid, since he's a DLC character, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um... Miranda Garris, Samara Thane, Kasumi we've talked to. Let's head up to the CIC. And I joked the last time I talked to Jacob and he pretty much dismissed us out the door just like most of these other people are doing. Let's see if he's ready to talk some more now. Commander, can I help you with something? I want to talk about you. I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. If you want, Commander. Oh, now Cerberus he's ready. has ranks, but it's not the Alliance. No rules about fraternization. Your boat, your call. You want to get friendly with everyone? That's your business. Relax, Jacob. I'm just interested in what makes you tick. Anyone else said that, I'd walk away. Most Cerberus people try to play like the elusive man, hiding bullshit behind a smile. But you? I like what I've seen. I'll give you a shot. What do you want to know? <laughs> My goodness. This seems kind of awkward. Anyhow, um, are you okay about your father? You want to talk about what happened with your father? I don't really have anything to say about that, Commander. It's done with. Let's ask about does he have any family. Anyone waiting for you back home? Only child and no extended family. Never settled down. Didn't seem fair with this job. But you can't miss what you never had. Let's ask if he and Miranda have history. I know you and Miranda work together. I got the impression it might have been more than that. It got a little close. Then it got really far apart. The rest isn't your business, Commander. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Shepard is interested in her. I think, mm, okay, there might still be a chance. Wow, this is hard. I'm going the renegade route. I know Jake, Jacob is probably not going to like this, but my ship, my business. Anything that could affect the ship or the mission is my business. I need to know you two won't be a problem. Now you sound like Cerberus. It's not an issue. It was a long time ago. That's the end of it. I think that's enough talking. I appreciate your interest, Commander. I appreciate you dropping it, too. Ooh. Whoa. Okay. So, anyhow... There's the rocky relationship between Shepard and Jacob. And that's going to do it. We've talked to everybody. And in our next episode, it is finally time to do the final loyalty quest. And that is for Jack. And we're going to the Telton facility. On Pragia. Alright, this is Hill. And I'm out.